Your monthly subscription box from PostFlyBox.com includes all the materials needed to tie a dozen flies along with some extra goodies. The Sea Streamer is a versatile saltwater fly pattern that many predatory fish species find hard to resist because of its profile, movement, and lifelike shimmer. The Sea Streamer starts with a size 1 aught heavy duty hook. Begin by getting the hook firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. Next, load a bobbin with a spool of white unithread. Get the thread started on the hook shank behind the eye and after taking a few wraps rearward, snip off the excess tag. Pick up the coil of solder wire and locate one of its ends. With the coil in hand, lay the end on top of the hook shank above your tying thread and take tight wraps with the thread to secure the wire. Begin making rearward wraps with the solder wire down the hook shank but behind your tying thread. After six or seven turns, use the thread to once again anchor the wire to the top of the hook shank, then rock the wire up and down to break it off. Go over the wire with wraps of tying thread to make sure it's locked down well. Measure out and snip off a three inch length of the monofilament fishing line. This is a little more than you'll need, but having a bit of extra length makes handling somewhat easier. Lay one end of the fishing line on top of the hook shank behind the solder wire and take wraps of tying thread to anchor it there. Go all the way back to the start of the hook bend. Fold the line over to form a loop about a hook gap in length. Bind the folded over segment to the top of the hook shank right next to the previous one and snip the excess off close. To increase the fly's durability, get hold of some super glue, here Fly Tire Z-Men, and give the whole tie down area you just completed an ample coat. Take tight wraps with your tying thread over top of the adhesive to set it and lock everything in place. End with your tying thread at the back of the solder wire. Snip 8 to 10 strands of pearl flashaboo free from the hank and measure to form a tail about two and a half full hooks in length. Anchor the material to the top of the hook shank all the way back to the start of the mono loop, then forward to the solder wire. Lift the excess butt ends up and snip them off close. Measure out and snip off nine inches of the pearl braid material. Lay one of the ends on top of the hook shank and take thread wraps to secure it. Keep taking rearward wraps all the way back to the base of the tail, then return your thread forward to the solder wire. Make slightly overlapping wraps with the braid to create an attractive pearlescent body on the fly. When you reach your tying thread, use it to anchor the braid and snip the excess off close. Get hold of the white faux bucktail and snip a small clump free. Measure so the fine tips of the fibers are in line with the ends of the flashaboo. While keeping that measurement, secure the faux bucktail to the top of the hook shank with nice tight wraps of tying thread. It's slippery stuff, but do your best to lock it down well. Lift the excess butt ends up and snip them off at a shallow angle behind the hook eye. Once again, reach for your super glue, and this time apply an ample drop to the newly snipped off ends. Take tight wraps of tying thread over top of and through the adhesive to ensure the slippery material won't pull free. Now, snip a similar size clump of chartreuse faux bucktail free. Measure the material so it's the same length as the white, then anchor it in a similar manner. Snip six to eight strands of pearl crystal flash free from the hank and align those ends with the ends of the bucktail. Here too, the tie-in procedure is the same, only there's no need for the super glue. Repeat the procedure with six to eight strands of pearl flashaboo. All the materials should be about the same length. Next, strip four to five strands of olive ostrich free from the stem while keeping their butts and tips aligned. Here too, they should be equal in length to the other materials and the tie-in procedure is the same. For another level of security, pick up an ample drop of super glue and apply it to the entire wing tie-down area. Take wraps with your tying thread to both set the adhesive and to build up a fairly significant head on the fly. 
Reach for your whip finish tool and use it to do a five or six turn whip finish, then seat the knot well and snip your tying thread free. The C streamer should now look something like this. Squeeze out a fairly large drop of UV Cure resin onto a scrap piece of paper. Using a bodkin, pick up a large drop of the resin and touch it against the thread wraps on either side of the fly's head. Peel one of the 3D eyes from the sheet and place it against the adhesive on the near side of the hook. Then, pull a second eye free from the sheet and stick it to the far side of the hook. The eyes should be mirror images of each other. At this point, you can make micro adjustments to the position of the eyes if needed. When you're satisfied with their look, pick up a UV torch and give the resin behind the eyes a really good shot of UV light. They now should be held in place reasonably well. Go back to your puddle of UV Cure resin and pick up another ample drop. Use the resin to fill in the space on top of the hook shank and behind the eyes. Then, give that area a shot of UV light to cure it. Scoop some more resin and fill in the area on the underside of the hook shank, then cure that. Continue picking up resin and filling in the space between the eyes. Applying thin layers and curing them works much better than trying to apply one big thick layer. The end result should look something like this. And that's the Sea Streamer. They're durable, fairly easy to cast, and most importantly, are proven fish catchers.